here's what I wanted to ask you about. In that litigation, he comes out, Niall, and he blames all of his problems, I mean, all of them, on the media. He actually said in his quote, they could say he submitted his testimony, but he did it in writing the direct exam, the cross-exam is live. Uh, And he said in his witness statement, during his adolescence and young adulthood, the tabloids, the evil tabloids cast him in a role, the thicko, the cheat, the underage drinker, the irresponsible drug taker. I ended up feeling as though I was playing up to a lot of the headlines and the stereotypes that they wanted to pin on me, mainly because I thought that if they are printing this rubbish about me and people were believing it, I may as well do the crime, so to speak. He takes responsibility for absolutely nothing. Yeah, precisely. And um, I closely follow the uh, the court proceedings in London this week. And Harry comes across as... uh, as someone who has no sense of personal responsibility at all. Uh, He comes across as basically a hugely entitled uh, figure, uh, extremely narcissistic, I think, in many respects, but also uh, delusional and paranoid. Um, And I think that his, uh, you know, evidence this this week and his uh, overall approach to the hearings uh, has has been uh, a disaster for, for Harry, actually. And I think the British public have been monumentally unimpressed uh, with his performance this this week and are turning even further against him. This is an individual who who I think has, uh, um, you know, real uh, delusions of grandeur. And the same is the case, of course, with with Meghan Markle as well. Uh, And and the level of, uh, you know, paranoid delusion and, and narcissism that we saw on display in the High Court this week was absolutely staggering, even by the standards of, of Prince Harry here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he he has very little chance, I think, of winning this, this case against the Mirror Group newspapers. He has no firm evidence whatsoever. Uh, and, and I think that um, this was, uh, you know, his, his appearance in court this week uh, was an absolute uh, uh, disaster, I think, in many respects. He didn't even show up on the first day, as, as you pointed out. And uh, he came across as incredibly arrogant, actually. And, and that's something I think the British public really don't like at all. Uh, and, and Harry has become, I think, one of the most unpopular public figures uh, in, in the UK of the modern era. And that's, that's saying a lot. Well, here's the thing. I mean, he spent the past six months in his Netflix show, in his memoir spare, in his interviews, telling us the royal family was responsible for all the terrible leaks about him. The royal family was out to get him and the palace aides. And now he's in court saying, oh, you know what? I might have been wrong about some of the things I put in my book. It's actually the evil tabloids. (laughs) So which is it? Was it the royal family was out to get you or the tabloids were out to get you? Um, Because he seems to have blame for everyone other than himself. And I'll give you just one example. He's now claiming Piers Morgan, who's a great, correct critic of Harry and Meghan, um, that the reason Piers doesn't like them is because Piers worked for uh, one of these publications back in the day. He was editor of the Daily Mirror between 1995 and 2004. And uh, he accuses Piers of doing bad things and that all of Piers' criticism of them is in retaliation for the fact that Harry's brought this lawsuit. I'm looking at this thinking, or Harry, he, like the rest of us, just doesn't like you or your wife. It's something you're going to have to learn to get your arms around. I'll give you the final word now. Yes, I think that uh, you know Harry just blames everyone, everyone else for his own uh, problems and issues, uh, and uh, clearly he has a, a big vendetta against uh, the British media, in particular against figures like uh, Piers Morgan. Uh, everything Piers Morgan, I think, has said about Prince Harry is absolutely one hundred percent correct. Uh, I yes. think also uh, Harry has an intense hatred for the royal family as well, uh, and he has you know used his presence in America as a launch pad from which to attack the royal family, the British people, the British media. Uh, and, and I think it's absolutely outrageous, actually. Now that it's spring, almost summer, feels like summer, it's time to get outside and enjoy your backyard. But does your backyard need a little upgrade, a makeover? Start with the perfect centerpiece, a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. A Michael Phelps Swim Spa can transform your backyard into an oasis. Think of it. Think of it. You with the family, you getting your exercise. The Swim Spa is an alternative to a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. Got a bad back? Sit in the hot tub. Want to get your exercise going in time for your bikini? Take advantage of the pool. 
Michael Phelps Swim Spas have a water current, so you can swim, do aquatic exercises, or just have fun with your family. And because it's heated, you can choose your perfect water temperature and then use it all year long in any climate. Michael Phelps Swim Spas by Master Spas come in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard. So even if you have a teeny tiny backyard, check it out. And this is not some long, intimidating project. In fact, delivery and installation can take less than a day once your space is ready. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. You're going to love your Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. Go check it out, masterspas.com. Put in that promo code MK, which will save you $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.